So what happens when you move up from high school to college cross country? This is where, you know, I've been talking to a lot of folks and a lot of them are, you know, to a degree intimidated because you're going from 5K to 6K for girls and women and you're from 5K to 8K and even 10K for men in certain situations, right? So you're either running an extra K or an extra 3K or into, uh, an extra 5K in championship season. So that's a lot more running, okay? And it, it looks like a daunting task and it really is to do in, in the beginning. So, you know, one of the reasons I emphasize training over the summer, right, is to prepare yourself for something like that. Especially when you go from high school to college, you could be number one in high school and then go to college and be number 10. Okay. And to me, the rule of thumb is if you can match what you ran time wise as a freshman in college that you did in high school, that's a good, that's a good season, right? If you get better, even better, because you're adjusting to a lot of different things, a completely different lifestyle, right? Um, classes, completely different. You're training with a lot most for the most part, a lot better people at on average. And obviously your training is going to be more intense in a lot of areas, just easy runs, regular runs and so on. So, um, and you're going to be, you know, held to a different standard too. You know, the, 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 the team emphasis is placed to a, to a high, usually a high premium in the college level, right? For most programs. And as it should be, the teammates are going to rely on you just like you're going to rely on your teammates. And you know, this is where you can take advantage of some of the things that I've talked about, like tempo runs. The reason why you know I, I have people start doing tempo runs in the summer, right? You do, you, you build your mileage through, into to, into June, then you add speed development in July, and then you start incorporating tempo runs because it can help you transition right into the more intense work as well. But if you're getting up to the point where you're doing 20 to 25 minutes, you've already exceeded the time that you've, for the most part, run over 5K. So in terms of time, you've already getting, taken a step towards working towards 8K and 10K, right? And it makes that transition less daunting, less difficult. But it also elevates your your, your VO2 max. So it's going to, in turn, increase your, you know, your, your 3K performance, your 5K performance, your mile performance, and so on. So I mean, it's not only, only on the track. I test people on a, on a mile on the track. And you've heard me say this a lot of times, right? Um, <clears throat> test people on the mile and you can determine their fitness and their abilities for other events. And you can set their training paces. But how do you get there? Just because your capability is there in a 3K and 5K doesn't mean you can go out and do it tomorrow. The other things have to be put in place like the tempo runs, the threshold training, and all the other things to make it possible for you to take big chunks off your 3K and off your 5K, right? There's no difference here. You're going from the shorter cross country distance to the longer cross country distance. And if you can average what you averaged over 5K, now over 6K and 8K, that is a huge step towards your next level of performance. Huge step of improvement, right? And that's a good thing to be shooting for over time. But again, this is why tempo runs are so important. Threshold reps are so important. You can do them early season and mid season. You can go over distance too, right? Because the recovery component is different than doing hard stuff with a lot more recovery, right? And puts you in, and again, it sets you up to even do over distance on a race week too. Sometimes I'll have people run a mile race on a Saturday, but they're doing threshold thousands on a Tuesday. And it sounds kind of productive, but why shouldn't they be running 400s? Well, not really. The shorter, faster stuff, the week of a shorter, faster race can take the legs out of you. Or it can take the zip out of your legs. That's why threshold Ks and things like that. And you ask Marcus O'Sullivan, he used to do it too. Threshold Ks, the week of a 1,500-meter race and so on. It preserves your legs. And it's just a way of running faster in races by slowing down the training. Okay, It sounds kind of productive but it's actually effective. But going back to the moving up from high school to college cross country, these are the types of components of training that I highly encourage you to incorporate if you're not incorporating them now. If you're a coach, please incorporate them. Please consider incorporating them with your athletes. They will make a world of difference. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do if you're a coach or an athlete. I've got 600 videos. Okay, and you have direct access to me. My email address is blackbeltrunningcoach at gmail.com. Again, it's blackbeltrunningcoach at gmail.com. That's my email address. 
okay? You can reach out to me for any questions about any of my videos, okay? I also do, I help advise uh, and a couple of high school coaches and college coaches, okay? As coaches, we don't know everything. Some are beginners coaches and want, you know, how to, to be able to chart the right path so they're doing a good job moving forward. I'm happy to help those coaches, all of them, because at the end of the day, I want to pay it forward. I want to help other people who love the sport, just like I do. And the sport's been really good to me. So this is my way of paying it forward. Okay. I want to share my knowledge and insights with you. And I'm speaking from experience as a former competitive runner and a coach for the last two decades plus. Okay. I'm also USATF certified. I'm also Wharton trained and certified in active isolated flexibility. Musculoskeletal therapist as well. So I'm here to help you run fast and teach you how to stay healthy while you do it. And that's the other part, of, one of the other parts of the puzzle, right? So if you have any questions, reach out to me. And please think about this. And, and one of the things I talked about recently is visualization, right? Is, you know, kind of mental preparation to think about, okay, what do I want to accomplish in this race? What do I want to accomplish in this workout? Closing your eyes and spending a little bit of time in thinking the morning of a race or the night before. That helps you solidify a more concrete game plan, right? And makes it more realistic for you to actually feel like you can execute the game plan. Because at the end of the day, you want to manifest what you're visualizing into reality, okay? And visualization can help you in this regard. What am I going to get from 5K to 8K now? Well, consider that your domain, your office, right? That's your homeroom. This is where I'm going to go to work. This is where I'm going to make the other the opponents hurt, right? And how can you do that? By doing the work, the necessary work. Not only over the summer, but during the cross-country season. I say this too. Running over the summer makes a difference. Running over consecutive summers makes a big difference, okay? Running over the summer is where you get fit. Running during cross-country in the fall is where you get very fit. And you can really parlay that fitness collectively into the track season winter and spring, okay? The short races will complement the longer runs later on. The longer runs here will complement the shorter ones here. They work together. And the better balanced training program that you do, and the more, the more consistent you are executing it, the better off you are going to be in the short run and the long run, okay? That's something I cannot emphasize enough. So please take advantage of visualizing. Please take advantage of your tempo runs your threshold training, and if you have any questions on how to incorporate these things, reach out to me. I can sit down with you. We can do a Zoom. We can do whatever you want. We can show you how to put the pieces of the puzzle together because it's not only what you do, it's when you do it and why you do it and how often you do it. Okay, How do you build this stuff around races, especially if you race often? Okay, How do you do it in a way that serves as an effective weapon of training to help you get faster, but also help you keep healthy, right? When do you incorporate off days and recovery days so that you're not having to take these massive down weeks every so often having to take a massive jump up the following week? Is that enough time for your body to adapt, right? Is there a need to take these big down weeks or can I just give it a consistent off day every so often so I could train and recover at the same time, right? These are important questions to ask. Okay, and these are definitely important questions to discuss. If you have any questions about any of these, you need help on anything, please reach out to me. I'm here to help, okay? And that's what I wanted to talk about today, going from high school to college, cross country, because there is a transition, and I encourage you to be ready for it, okay? And how do you be ready for it? Put in the work over the summer, talk to your teammates, talk to your coaches, ask him or her, what should I expect going from 5K to 8K? or going from 5K to 6K, right? What should I expect? Okay, and they will more than likely be more than happy to talk to you about it and give you some insight. Well, this is what you can expect. This is what you can do over the summer to make it easier for you to make that a reality, right? And this is where the systematic approach makes a lot of sense. And that's what, that's my approach. Okay, it's all strategically put out. And not everybody does that. Not everybody has to do it. That's just the way I do it. 
Okay. I, if you're I, the way I look at it, if you're in cross country, I want you running your best races in November, not October or September. Okay. It's different from track. Why? Because you can get an early season track qualifier, basically just train the whole season, rest, train, and so on, and just show up in nationals with your automatic qualifier. Cross country is different. You have one chance to qualify, and it's at the end of the season, not in the beginning of the season. Meaning what? You have to be consistent throughout the whole entire season to put yourself in a position to qualify. And cross country is not easy to qualify for nationals. Put locker, NCAAs, not easy at all. Okay? So just think about this. I hope this gives you a little bit of food for thought. Okay? If you have any questions, reach out to me. Have a great season. Talk to you next time.